Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to be looking at how you can import a track and get the tempo from it. So this is the kind of thing that's useful either if you want to create a backing track for yourself. So maybe you've got a backing track and you want to play along with it or add some things to it or if you want to work collaboratively. So there's a lot of that going on obviously with the current situation that's happening and is looks to be ongoing for quite a while in the world. So we're going to take a look at this. Now, the eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that we are not in Cubase Elements. We are in Cubase Pro. Now, this is purely so I can demonstrate that this is much easier to do in Cubase Pro with a function called the Time Warp Tool. So here we've got a track. It's really easy to see where the bass drums are, etc. Now, in Cubase Pro, we can just grab a bar and move it around and Cubase calculates the tempo that would allow that to happen. So it's dead easy to do this. You can see I'm just doing it visually roughly and then I could zoom in at each point and then get it exactly spot on. And it's very, very easy to do visually in Cubase Pro. So if you get to do this in Cubase Pro, there's a video on it elsewhere on the channel. This is this is dead quick and easy. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's not what we're doing today. We're going to do it in Cubase Elements, which means we need to go old school. So let's flick back to Cubase Elements and take a look at how we do it without the magic of the Time Warp tool. Right, so here we are back in Cubase Elements, and we're going to look at how you can get the tempo using a different method other than the Time Warp tool. So there's actually two different ways we're going to look at. So I'm going to show you firstly the the really old school way which is like the way we used to have to do it back in back in the day like the old man that i am uh, on things like akai samplers etc so i'm just going to import uh, an audio file so i'm going to import track i've used for a number of things here so first things first zooming in so we want to be able to see things clearly g and h or shift g and h on your keyboard and at the very beginning of any of these files, you'll probably have a bit of a gap. This isn't much of one, but it would still make a difference if we didn't didn't take this out. Now, the other bit is where you judge where you're going to assess a particular beat starts. In this case, you normally, well, nearly always, you, you get these sort of whiskers before the bass drum starts proper. But I'm going to take it to where they are because it's pretty easy to see at the beginning of this. So I turn snap off and just trimmed this. Turn snap back on and then move that across. So now that starts at bar one, beat one. And if we zoom out, turn the click on with C. So the click is on and then play it. You'll hear the first beat was in time, but after that it goes adrift pretty quickly. And that's because what we actually want is bar two should start here because we've got four complete beats. So I'll turn the click off. We've got one, two, three, four, and there's where the next bar should start. So it should start here, but you can see it's actually starting there. So Cubase is running too slow because its bar two is happening later than the music's bar two. So we need to increase the tempo and you can do it down here. So what you can do is just click this and you'll see as I do this, it looks as if the audio is stretching, but actually what's happening is the grid is, is changing, but our view of it isn't changing. So um, we can see pretty easily with this because handily it's at a fairly easy to find tempo of 130. We've got something that looks about right. And if we zoom in, we can see that bar two is starting where it, it should be. And we can now play the song with a click on and you'll hear that's fine. So this is a nice, easy example to do. And in fact, if we go even all the way to the end of seven minutes, you'll find with a lot of tunes, that have been done on computers, etc. they tend to be whole numbers. You know, they, they may not vary so much. So with real people who haven't been playing to a click, often it will it will vary significantly. And then really trying to do this kind of thing in Cubase Elements is too much effort and too much... It, it would take you too much time because you'd have to set uh, individual tempos for each bar and do this kind of thing manually, which was uh, long-winded. So that's it on a fairly easy track. Now I'm going to look at it on another one. So I'm just going to remove this track to avoid any confusion and then import a different track. So this has actually come from the YouTube music library. I will leave a link to the creator in the description. Ginormous Robots. So this shouldn't get a copyright strike. So let's move this to the beginning. And we can see this is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously pretty different in terms of tempo. So first things first with this, we've got some unwanted and then some probably wanted space before the track actually begins. So we've got a bit of noise then. That sort of reverb guitar picking sound, etc. So again, we need to decide where we're going to choose that the bass note in this case starts. So I'm going to choose it to be there. So we're just going to trim that. Now, if you've ever zoomed into anything like this and you've got it really accurately, and then you might need to zoom out to get the handle, what you can do is change the snap mode to cursor. And then now we will snap to the cursor. So then super accurately, you can see it just snaps to that. So zooming in and out appropriately and then changing your snap mode is really useful for that kind of thing. So, so now that again, you'll hear with the click turned on bar one beat one lines up. Obviously Cubase is going way too fast now for this. So we'll turn the click off and have a listen to where let's say two bars of this music are. Okay, and then we've got this kind of bass note. I'd say it probably starts about there, but you can't get take too much from this because that note might not be in exactly the right place, but we'll go pretty close. So again, what we're going to do is just get that. I'll say that's going to be there. And again, we'll put that on cursor. Select the scissors. I press three on the keyboard to change tools there. And I'm going to cut that there for two reasons firstly because this makes this easier to deal with so i'm just going to delete that second part so you can see much more easily now if we were going to do this by the changing the tempo method which in fact i will do just to you me you can see cubase is running way too fast so we need to slow it down because it's bar three is happening too quickly and it looks like the, the audio is changing speed but actually cubase's grid is changing speed but our view of it isn't changing and if we get down to 100 BPM, that looks pretty good. Okay, we could fine tune it and say 99.8, let's say, or a little below. And this is very reminiscent of, of back in the day with samplers where you just trial and error it till you get it to work. Okay, now we might want to check that this loop works. So whether we have the tempo set right or not, if we click on that and hit P and turn cycle on, so we'll, we'll leave the click off so Cubase tempo is kind of relevant. If this if this loops okay audibly, then we're probably in the right neck of the woods. It's not a million miles off. Let's go with that for the moment. And um, we can see we would need to fine tune this a fair bit. So if we go to again to where the right locator is, we've got close, but we're not we're not perfectly on. We're a little bit under, etc. So that can get a bit finicky. So what I'm going to do is show you a different way of doing this. I'm just going to put it back to where we started out with 130. Okay. Now, there is a tool to get this to do the maths for you. So it's it's not the time warp tool, but it's it's an improvement. So we know that this is two bars of music. So we've listened to that and we know we know that. What we need to do is to tell Cubase the length that that should be using the locators and then it can work out the tempo. So this is two bars and then we need to set a two bar loop. So I'm gonna drag the locators here, making sure snap actually is turned on to grid. Otherwise I would have made the mistake that I'm always telling people not to make. So now we can see we've got a two bar loop from bar one to bar three. And now to get Cubase to do the maths, we go to audio, advanced, Oh, it's the scary advanced menu. And then we do set tempo from event. We click that and it says set global project tempo because it wants to confirm. And we click yes. And it works out the tempo for us. We see it's come to a tempo of 99.755, which may be correct for the whole song, but let's just assume that it is for the moment. But it saved us having to do that tedious trial and error of dialing in exactly what the tempo is. So if you've got an audio loop, and you want to work out the tempo of it, you can do it pretty quickly by just setting the locators to the length of that loop when you listen to it, and then audio, advanced, set tempo from event. So let's extend that out. So that's pretty easy to do because we can just pull this out. So this is non-destructive editing, so we've not deleted the audio, we've just changed the reference to it. And 
with the click turned on it's it's, it's close it seems to come and go certainly but So if you were recording to that, i.e. recording audio or just recording MIDI and not wanting to worry about synchronization and using editing techniques such as quantize, etc., you could definitely get away with that. But the problem is this this song may change tempo. My suspicion is it's actually at 100 BPM and we're just a little bit inaccurate at the beginning. But changing those tempos throughout the song would actually be quite long-winded because you have to go to the tempo track which is here and then insert a new tempo and then work out the tempo for the next bit so this this could get really messy and that's exactly the work that the time warp tool does so we're not going to look at that but what we are going to look at is just how you put in a count in if you need one so here we've got this this song which has a bit of music before the first proper bar so we're going to want to move that later. So I'm actually going to move that along to bar three and then turn snap off and just reinstate that sound beginning. So. Now, having a count in can be really useful because often you want the count in just at the beginning and then as soon as the backing track or whatever you're going to play along with is playing, you want to groove with that rather than being taken off the case, in this case by the click being possibly a little bit off. So it's pretty simple to do. So you add an instrument track. We're going to pick Groove Agent SE. And once that's loaded, just going to load up a GM kit so we could just if you need to, just search there. But GM kit is just standard generic sounds. And in there, I'm just going to call that count in. So we know what it is. So I'm going to create a new part between bar one up to bar three. So just double click between the locators to create that empty part. And then double click to open that up. Scroll down to where the bass drum is. And then just use the pencil tool just to draw in, let's say, uh, a click and then three bass drums. And then I'm just going to select all of that with Control or Command A and then duplicate it with Control or Command D. And there you go. There's your counting ready to go. So now without the click, we know exactly where to start. And you not only know exactly where to start, you also don't have to worry about turning the click off. So if you're working on your own, which of course a lot of people are at the moment, uh, given the current situation, that will be useful. So if you need to do this kind of thing for collaboration, etc., that can be helpful. And then you can mix down or you know export your stems or your recording or whatever and send it to whoever's mixing it. And you can, you can create something remotely, which is the, certainly the way I've been working for the past few weeks. So I hope you found those two methods of finding tempo useful and I will see you again soon.